You're listening to Resource Network Radio. Well, good afternoon. Uh, we're here live with the very prolific and award-winning author and screenwriter, Keith Rommel. And Keith, I really appreciate you taking some time today to talk with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing great, Keith. Uh, I know you are a very, very busy man. And I first off want to say a really big congratulations to you because uh, your Thanatology, uh, The Cursed Man, The Lurking Man, and The Sinful Man well, are all going to be made into movies. And I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about how that happened because I know you actually wrote a book about that. Yes, I, uh, I wrote a book, How I Got Into Hollywood, and uh, an abbreviated version of how I um, ended up getting the attention of our Hollywood producer happened uh, approximately in 2000, between 2010 and 2011, I was trying to find a traditional publisher. I was having an, an extremely uh, difficult time doing so, um, and then I started looking at the idea of self-publication. And uh, I ended up printing about 120 copies, uh, ARC copies, advanced work new copies, and I uh, wanted to self-finance and, and see if I can get some advanced reviews from uh, reviewers to help me along. So I was selling books, and that was paying for me to mail the books out to some reviewers, and the way I was able to get my, my first uh, movie or the attention of the first producer was from that initial art copies that I had purchased, sold out of the trunk of my car, and then eventually sent them out to reviewers. Two reviews ended up coming out at the same time, and they compared my writing to Stephen King, which I was uh, extremely grateful, of course, for uh, that compliment. And uh, with that said, I ended up getting an email from a, from a man named Jim Perry, uh, and he said that he had the the story and he wanted to turn it into a movie and of course I was very skeptical because I thought I was getting punked or something. <laughs> so, uh, that's, and then the rest is history and then uh, a couple years later we uh, did a casting call uh, translated it over into a uh, screenplay. Him and I wrote the screenplay together and um, he took me every step of the way. I helped uh, with, the audi- with the auditions. He let me look at those so there was, there was a lot of things that was involved but it was you know, the nature on how I got picked up was uh, two reviews, professional reviews. And that's why it's important, actually, too, that, it, why a, you know, for people to review a book. Because you never really know how that can affect, uh, you know, the book itself or and where that might end up. And, of course, The Cursed Man is going to be shown live, and the debut of that happens on Halloween. Absolutely. How, this Halloween night in uh, Beverly Hills, California, at the Fine Arts Theater, um... The theater itself seats about 450 people, and uh, we have a full house, so I'm really looking forward to making the trip to California and and seeing the Cursed Man on the big screen. Well, that's really awesome, and then out of that, your second book is being produced into a movie, too. Absolutely. Um, I had the the fortunate uh, events of meeting uh, Maritza Brickasack through Jim. Uh, She's one of the actresses that... uh, had a role in the, the Cursed Man, and her and I had formed a, uh, a friendship, and I had this, I had this story, The Lurking Man, which I consider to be one of the best stories that people have never read, <laughs> and I would say, get out here and read it, it's the best story you've never read, it's, it's so, so good, um, um, so when people ask me what is my favorite work, I really wrestle around with the Thanatology series, because the first three books, first of all, can be read in any order, and they're all standalone stories, but as a, as a series, they make a, a much larger picture of what I'm trying to paint here. Um, and we're on the heels of the Thanatology book four coming out, which is The Silent Woman. That's when you have to read that as book four because the first three books are uh, all interconnected into book, into book four. Um, so with my, with my meeting, Melissa, you know, I was I was looking at the cursed man. I'm watching the movie as as Jim is sending me the movie, and I'm and I'm watching it, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, man, you know, Maritza is always in makeup, and she's such a pretty woman, and she's such a good actress. And I said, this this is the right this role of Canyon in in the Lurking Man is just it's her. Like I and I couldn't. I was like obsessing over it, and then I sent her an email and I said, Maritza, I said I have a story, and I would really like you to look at it because I think that this is like you. I like wrote this for you. It sounds weird, but it's like I just see you in this movie. And she uh, she took the script, and uh, you know she gave me my praise, and then she took me under her wing, and we can 
convert it into a into a, a shootable screenplay um, with her great ideas on how to transfer some of the more complex things into film and you know teaching me and learning just as Jim did. I, I learned a lot from her and uh, I, I've seen the movie and I, I can tell you that it's absolutely outstanding and I'm, I'm as excited for the Working Man release as I am for the Cursed Man. So it's like I have two very exciting things happening and the third exciting thing of course now is the Sinful Man uh, getting ready to go. And you're, in pre -de and you're in pre development for the Sinful Man? Yes, we are. So I am, I'm super excited. I'm excited with the people that we're working with. Um, and I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm ecstatic just to, just to have, just to be so blessed to have, you know, three books in a series out of three so far in terms of film is, is, uh, is certainly something that uh, I'm very thankful for. Oh, and it's very incredible, but it, it goes to show, you know, the level of the book because they don't make a movie out of a book that doesn't have some meat to it. So your your books have received a, a lot of awards, accolades. Uh, again, you can find Keith Rommel on Amazon.com. Follow him on Facebook. He's on Twitter. Um, KeithRommel.Weebly.com is his official website. And um, you've got, I mean, really, you're prolific. You've written a lot of books. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about The Devil Tree? Oh, The Devil Tree, that's, that's one of my more popular books as well. Um, that's about a, uh, a serial killer, a very little known serial killer here in Florida that ran around in the 70s and um, 80s. He, uh, he would take his victims to a tree that's in Port St. Lucie, which is a, uh, a town uh, in Florida, and he would take them to this tree and he was known for killing two at a time. And his victims were always women because he didn't like women. He had a, a, a very bizarre relationship with his father and his sisters. Um, and I don't want to spoil too much of the story, and you know, so I'm going to be very careful with what I say here. But he would take him to this specific tree, which Don named the Devil Tree. And the reason why it's called the Devil Tree is because it is believed that his evil was so, so intense that it actually seeped into the tree, and so did the um, torment of his victims. So it is, it is a notoriously haunted location. It is a, uh, a location that's somewhat hard to find for some people, but it does draw people in. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's a very interesting legend. Uh, the tree was, um, they attempted to remove the tree. Some people say that they did. Some people say that they didn't. Some people say that this is the right tree. Some people say it's the wrong tree. And when I say some people, I'm talking about people from everyday walk of life. And... Port St. Lucie Police Department officers, which I've spoken to, and it's pretty amazing on how they all have stories, but they kind of conflict with each other. So it's like, and that's the whole part of the legend. It's so, so it's based off of a legend. So what I do is I write it in a fiction manner, and I inject uh, the, the fiction with what I know is fact. So it's intertwined with both fact and fiction to tell a, a greater story. Um, and it's just, it's really intriguing and it's really a, a, a a good fast-paced thriller. So. Yes, and it's a book that's getting a lot, a lot of attention too. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about your book, Among the People. Yes. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> um, Among the People is a uh, is is a book about uh, it's about an angel that uh, fell from the grace of God with Satan, and in the present day, he finds out something so bad about hell that even a fallen angel is so repulsed and so shocked that he hides, hence the title, among the people to try to figure out how to get back to heaven to let them know what's going on and what the devil has planned. And little does he know that when he hides among the people, anybody that he comes in contact with starts to have some problems with um, the, uh, Satan's minions from below and Satan himself. So I actually don't call him Satan in the book. I call him something different. But it's uh, it's it's a story of heaven and hell. It's a story of redemption. Um, and it is said that once an angel falls from the grace of God, they can never return. So as you can imagine, this angel's having a heck of a time trying to get God's attention to let him know what's going on. So <laughs> it's, very, 
very, very hard to, uh, you know, get himself out of this situation. Yeah. Yeah, so y- your books are very, very deep and stuff. Is there something that, like, happened in your childhood or, you know, event that you remember in your past that sort of triggered you to become a writer? Um, well, I had a severe learning disability um, as, a, as a young young guy, and they suggested that I start reading comic books. And this is before comic books were really popular. Um, I don't really want to give my age away, but anyway. <laughs> um, so a teacher recommended, because I was having a hard time, like when, when you were required to read, like, for example, The Death of the Salesman, uh, you know, books like that, I wasn't, I wasn't comprehending what I was reading. So a, a teacher actually got really, really smart and said to me, you know, get some comic books. I got some comic books. They looked at the comic books themselves. Then they told me to go home and read the comic book, and they would test me on that. And that actually became, to this day, I still collect, I don't like to say collect, I, I read them. I don't just put them in a bag and stick them in the closet. Right. I still read comic books to this day because it's, it, it's a passion and a love that I've had since a child. And I think that's how I became also interested in screenwriting. And um, I did have some screenwriting know-how um, from back in the day because I would I would kind of play around with it a little bit, and I would also kind of write my own stories uh, and try to turn them into comic books and stuff. Even though I have no artistic, uh, you know, ability in writing, um, I just kind of dabbled in it. And it's a very they're very they're a very close medium together. Um, how you write a comic book script versus a movie script. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's really interesting. I know that because, you know, people re- read books, and I talked with you earlier in a conversation that I'd had, you know, about, like, how it's hard hard to sell a book nowadays and stuff, but um, but people read books of, you know, people they like and they follow things, so you, you're garnering a, a very large um, following, and you've got books that have become movies, and, of course, you know, The Cursed Man's coming out on um, Halloween, which is really awesome. Uh, you also have a book called You Killed My Brother. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I love that book. That that book was that book was written um, because the thanatology, I, I'll, I'll say, is a um, they're very deep, um, and, and I think you kind of touched on it before. They're very deep, and they, they do carry messages. Um, and everything that I've written in the thanatology series is always based off of a true event. So I wanted to totally fictionalize something, and that's how I came up with "You Killed My Brother," and it's. A fast-paced crime story. Caution everyone. There's probably some cursing in there. It's you know it's a little different than the normal stuff that I write. I had a lot of fun with it, um, and there's a lot of violence in it because it's a it's a it's about fate, and it's about a rich and very very popular doctor in a town that comes across a local street gang that's very very ruthless. And fate has them cross, a, uh, cross paths in such a way that it creates a war between the rich and famous, or the rich and powerful, versus a very ruthless street gang. And it's just how a domino effect on how one action creates this spark and this chain of events that just keeps happening and happening and happening, and how does it end? And I am currently, right now, uh, the cover design for the South Side Sinners, which is the second book in the series, which picks up from where that the cliffhanger is. So everybody knows that there is a cliffhanger <laughs> in that book. And it does lead into the South Side Sinners, which I'm putting the finishing touches on now, but it probably won't be released until probably about March of uh, next year. Mm-hmm. And of course you're going to be releasing The Silent Woman, which is uh, part of The Cursed Man, The Lurking Man, The Sinful Man, and then The Silent Woman, that's be coming out also. Yes, The Silent Woman is coming out, we're, we're going to try to push it out for October, before the movie, um, and then in December we have The Decaying Man, which is book five, and then we have The Mangled Woman, which is book six. Wow. So those will all be trickling out, and then... After the three thanatology titles are released, the next three 
are released, then we're going to uh, focus on the south side centers. Well, see, and that's what I said. You are very prolific, and I think that that is what you know. Uh, it it takes uh, uh, for a writer. You can't just write one book and think you're going to be famous or whatever. And and again, uh, like in a conversation we had, uh, it's harder nowadays to to sell a book. But you really are doing very well, and having your books be made into movies and and you know the. You Killed My Brother, uh, that that sounds like another movie too, and I do know, because I've had the pleasure of being able to see, like, uh, The Lurking Man, you know, in its form that it is now, really incredible, and I actually have read some of your books, very, very deep, um, and uh, thoughtful, and yeah, they're very meaty, so they are really uh, visual uh, when you're reading, so I could see how people would say hey let's make a movie out of it so um uh, big congratulations to you on that and i wanted to thank you too you're part of the apparition atlas annual haunted halloween party and uh, you guys are going to be taking over for the lurking man because on facebook you can go follow lurking man and of course follow keith rommel and maritza brickasack too but on tuesday or no i mean monday the 10th and then the 24th and you'll be doing some things uh promoting yourself and part of the the party and stuff going on uh so we really appreciate that and people can go and find your books on amazon uh follow you on facebook you're also on goodreads uh, are there other places that people can find you um, I'm on LinkedIn, if anybody wants to connect on LinkedIn, um, I do some work off of there, I post articles a lot there, um, and if, you know, if any, if any writers have any questions or anything, I always like to try to help writers along, I don't have a magic wand, but I, you know, I like to, you know, if they have questions or if they're unsure about certain steps in the process and, and what have you, I love to answer questions as well as any questions that any readers may have if they've read something of mine and, you know, they want to discuss it, you know, why I wrote something, where is the true story in what I wrote, because it is categorized as fiction, although, as I said, it's based off of true stories, and in fact, The Cursed Man is based off of a guy that doesn't even know that I wrote a book based off of <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> way back in 2011, so... He still doesn't know. He doesn't even know there's a movie coming out because he he's my uncle's friend. Um, I now live in Florida. They're in New York. You know, um, I have my family of my own. So, you know, life kind of takes, you know, place and precedence of everything. Your time is limited. Uh, you know, working a day job and then, you know, writing books and so on and so forth. And I've been fortunate enough for the last year to be able to concentrate full time on writing. Um, and the movies too, obviously, because you're part of that happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, the both the movies, The Cursed Man and The Lurking Man, have already uh, won awards for the screenplay, and of course, The Cursed Man, um, the debut, is on Halloween, and then uh, who knows how many festivals and things and awards that you'll win out of that. And hopefully, people pick up the book and read the book, and then uh, you know, do the series. Yeah, yeah, and, and like I said with the series, I, I love the fact with the series that I, I tried to take a much different approach with it, and, and why, why, the reason why I did that is, of course, I want, I want people, like you said, I want people to pick up the book, I want people to read it, I want them to pick up the whole series and read it, because, you know, to me, it's a, it's, it's just a good read, if, you, if you're looking for something, you know, fresh and unique, I think that I, I'm in a, um, I'm in a category that's not, you know, just, overflowing with you know millions of stories like this i believe that i'm in a very unique oh yeah because your your books have depth yeah it's in a, i i you know i like to say that they're kind of in a unique area all by their all by themselves and so what i did was as i mentioned earlier is I, I i liked the idea that i had in mind and that was to have the first three books to be read in any order and i did it on purpose you know, and then when I sat down and I was getting ready to, to write book four, I'm like, you know, for me to really start pulling in and developing these characters that make cameos and do smaller roles, you know, now starting on book four, they're going to have to start reading it in order. But the, the great thing, like I was saying, just to sum it up on those first three, you can mash it up. Yeah. It makes no difference. It's, it's, it's fun. You could read The Sinful Man first, which is book three, and you can you know, do it backwards if you want, working man and curse man, or in the order in which it's uh, intended. Right. Uh, book, book three, uh, book four 
show The Silent Woman is great because it's a catalyst off of The Lucky Man and, and especially so uh, The Lucky Man and The Cursed Man it really starts tying those into it um, and then book five which is The Decaying Man which people will get to know Sariel from the movie and if they haven't seen who Sariel is take a look at the movie poster um, that book is about Sariel mm-hmm. and, he, and he is um, definitely a very very fun character um, and <laughs> for who he is I think he's kind of likable so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and of course people can get your book How I Got Into Hollywood absolutely yeah absolutely and I'm actually getting ready to do a uh, I'm going to be going to Carlisle Pennsylvania and I'm going to be actually doing a presentation in Carlisle Pennsylvania on how I got into Hollywood so I'll be heading there um, the week before Halloween so I, I have a busy October yes you do and uh, I, I know obviously you're busy and uh, I really do appreciate the time that you took to talk with us today and we look forward to the release of the Cursed Man movie and then the Lurking Man and of course want to encourage people to follow you on Facebook check your books out on Amazon uh, follow you on Goodreads I know that you're also on IMDB because you now are a screenwriter and a producer so very very busy and um, really big congratulations to you for everything thank you very much and thank you for having me I really really appreciate it oh you're welcome and thank you Keith